Hello folks and welcome. Zorin OS, the GNOME desktop. Today I'm going to be talking about trying to have a little bit of fun with Terminal. Some folks are learning how to use Terminal and some folks have never used Terminal. So I'm going to actually try to get the uh, folks that have never used Terminal a little bit comfortable with that by using some fun commands at the same time giving you some practical ones also. So welcome folks. Again, this is a GNOME desktop for Zorin. 1920 by 1080 is what I'm filming in today. My video will be more than two minutes. All my videos have timelines and chapters. This is a NeoFetch command. Uh, basically, if you want that installed on your system, if you type in NeoFetch, Zorin will actually suggest how to install it in Terminal. So with that said, I'm going to close this box using Alt and F4. So this guy is looking in his computer. So sometimes we do need to look in our computer for information. I use terminal pretty heavily for that. But some people like point and click tools. And you can use both. But you can also have some fun with terminal at the same time. So mine is sitting right here. If you are wanting to um, take a look to see where terminal is in the menu, you can type in TER in your Zorin menu and there you have it. And you can also send it to your desktop. So let me open that. It usually opens up in a smaller box. And the first command I'm going to perform is cal. And I'm going to make this larger for you. Hopefully that's large enough. So Mark is our user for today. It's just a made up name. So you're probably laughing going, I have a calendar here too. However, this calendar here can look back in time. What do I mean by that? Taking a guess at people's birthdays. What day of the week they were born on. Ah, okay. So cal. I'll use uh, one for January and then a year. I'll just uh, make up a year. How about 1960? So here's the calendar from January of 1960. You got a friend born on the 20th. He or she was born on a Wednesday. I mean, hit the upper arrow key on my keyboard to repeat that last command and hit the backspace. So this is another way of looking at the same information. So I just put in the uh, month over here as one I typed in Jan here. This is the same calendar. All right, now the thing is getting a little busy, so I'm gonna punch up clear. And I'm gonna use the upper arrow key. It repeats that last command. One more upper arrow key produces that. I'm gonna hit the backspace. So um, let me just uh, type in a different month. Let's say February of uh, 19, let's say 87. If you got a friend born February of 1987, a friend or family member, and that person was born on the 14th, that was a Saturday. So you can have some fun with your friends and family. Now I've done very similar videos over, over the several years uh, regarding Terminal for having fun commands. So some of you folks may have already heard this one, but for the ones that haven't, um, July 4th is Independence Day in the United States. So I'm going to type in Cal and I can put in that or I can put in seven. So um, the trivia part of this is what day of the week did July 4th, 1776 fall on? You can go to the internet, but I can do this in terminal faster. It was the fourth. I'm sorry, it was, yes, it was the fourth, uh, but it was Thursday, Thursday. You can also uh, obviously put in all kinds of different years. So I'll do another one for let's, I'm just going to make up something like May 1556, for instance. That's the calendar for May 1556. You know, you're doing research, you're trying to find a date and time, and you wanted to know what day of the week that fell on. That kind of deal. Now I'm going to punch up clear. So um, what if you wanted to use a fun tool that's not installed? I'm going to use SL. It says it's not, in, not found, doesn't understand what I'm trying to type. But actually, SL does exist in my database of uh, software. So normally, you do the point and click thing with the suitcase down here to install software. And, uh, but you can also use terminal commands to install software. So basically, this is the terminal command for installing SL. All right. So basically, this is getting its software at the same place that that when you click the suitcase is what I'm getting at. You can also paste commands off the Internet. I would do that very discerningly when you paste commands off the Internet. 
be very careful. Okay, but more importantly, this is using an install command that you normally get your software from the same place you click on that suitcase. sudo is super user do space apt space install is the command for installing something. The piece of software in this case is SL. So what I'm going to do is highlight the whole line and right click and copy it and then paste it on the command line. So I don't have to retype it and then I clicked on there and the next thing after you put in sudo commands it's going to ask for a password. Mark is just a made up user. So Mark is our user for today. So right now it's requesting a password. So I'm going to put in Mark's password and then it takes off. A lot of times it'll ask you yes or no to continue. So you answer yes, it'll finish the install, no it'll terminate it. In most cases you, you probably are doing this on purpose. So I'm going to punch up clear to clear the screen and type in SL one more time now that it's installed. Having fun with terminal. It's just a silly train. If you want to see it one more time, I can hit the upper arrow key on my keyboard to repeat that last command and it'll do it again. Now that it's installed, I can do this all day long. That's just a silly thing. Having fun with terminal. Now I'm going to punch up clear. Now the next command that I have, you more likely will have to install, but I have mine already installed. And it would suggest how to install it if you don't, as long as you type it in correctly. Everything is literal in terminal. If you misspell it, you won't get uh, the right responses. But mine is installed. Fortune is another application or program that gives you different sayings. You'll visit the dumb bits of... of never mind. <laughs> That's silly. All right, here's another one for you. And I'm, all I'm doing is hitting the upper arrow key on my keyboard to repeat that and hitting enter. And it gives through different sayings every time. You, <laughs> that was horrible. Okay. A toad. All right. I'm going to punch up clear. Having fun with terminal. Okay. How about if we do some practical commands? How about ls, for instance? It's going to list the same thing as my file manager, right? So my file manager, you can see the desktop and documents, desktop, documents, and the rest of these folders. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here is close that, and I'm going to type in the same command, but I'm going to add a dash L -F -A on it. LS dash A. So now that it lists the same thing, except now I have also hidden stuff. So... Open up your file manager and you can do this yourself too. It's control H. It also shows you regular files and folders and hidden files and folders. So this icons folder here is not the same as this dot icons folder. I have a mouse pointer stored here. I'm currently not using it. It's a yellow one. I've shown it on previous videos before. But in either case, the stuff that's represented in blue is folders and it has a period in front of it. That means it's a hidden folder. So the ones that are files are like that. Okay, so bash history is the commands that I've been performing for you. Okay, here's the ones that I've just performed here. Now that you can see it. That's where that's coming from. Dot bash history, born again shell. is what that stands for. So what if you want more information on this command ls? Well, then I'm going to suggest that you type in man for manual pages space ls and it gives you the name of the thing the synopsis and the description and here was one of the commands that i was performing using the ls a option list directory contents i'm going to hit q and clear i can also use ls usb one word to list my usb bus i'm going to punch up clear I can also use ls cpu. This will be quite busy. It gives me all the particulars on my CPU. I'll just give you the short synopsis. I'm using that CPU today. There's lots of information regarding that one simple little command. One more. Clear. This will be quite busy. ls pci bus. ls pci one word. 
I'm going to punch out clear. Now I'm going to give you another one. So DF. This one's quite busy, but this is my actual hard drive that I'm currently booted in right now. It's currently in use and it's uh, 7%, denoted by root. Everything starts from root. However, this may be hard for you to read. I also have another hard drive in here. So I'm going to use df. This was just with the regular df command. I'm going to use also df space dash small h human readable. This is the same information rounded in gigabytes. Okay, this is a, in a different format than it is over here. Now I'm going to use the same command except I'm going to change that to an uppercase H and do that again. Alright, so now this says 198 gigabytes available versus this one says 184. Now why is that? Let me give you the definition clear of df. Man, df. And scroll down to the h part. It prints this in powers of 1024 with a small h. The big h is in the powers of a thousand. That's the difference on the calculation just to give you some examples of that particular command. I'm going to hit Q for quit because that's what the uh, tip is down at the bottom. And uh, more importantly, there's all kinds of different ways of looking at this. Now I'm going to give it to you in a different way. So if I hit DF and you just want to see this by itself, I'm going to highlight that and copy it. Just giving you a tip. I'm going to hit clear. I'm going to type in df space and right click on this and paste that in there. Now it's all by itself. Now I'm going to hit the upper arrow key. I'm going to scroll over to here and put in a dash h. This command will fail because there's no space in here. So let me just give you the example of a failure because you failed to put in a space command not found upper arrow key to repeat that command, except now when I hit that dash right here, I hit my space bar once. It produces a space and I go to the end and hit enter. Now the command is proper because I put in a space after the DF or DF part or the F part. So this is the same listing because you can see it's the same. 7% of root. 184 gigabytes is available, 14 gigabytes is used, the drive size is 208, roughly calculated in that format. Can I use the other command also? I can. Now let's calculate it a little differently. Same drive. Same percent though, different calculation. Does that make sense? Hopefully. Again, this is calculated differently. The uh, 1024 or the 1000, it depends on how you want to view this. I'm going to press Q for quit and do a recap. So Cal for calendar. Then you have fortune for the different sayings on a dog. <laughs> okay, that's, that's good. Um, and then um, you have the uh, train, SL. Again, you need to install most of this stuff. And then I'm gonna hit, uh, and I, I'm not gonna repeat those commands, but I'm gonna type in exit and say thank you for watching, folks.